This video is brought to you by Squarespace. What is up guys and welcome to my ranking of the Omen franchise. With the release of the first Omen the past weekend, we now have six films in this franchise to talk about. I've reviewed every single one of them, so if you want my more in-depth thoughts, please click this playlist up here and you can see all of my unfiltered thoughts on all six of these films. But with all of that being said, it's time to talk about the Omen franchise from the worst to the best. Coming in at number six pretty easily is gonna be Omen for The Awakening. This was a TV film that was intended to be the first of many. Clearly we did not get those and the quality of this film reflects why. And this film essentially undoes the very definitive ending of Omen 3 and kind of forces a continuation in this franchise that just doesn't really make much sense whatsoever from Jump Street. You have yet another Antichrist character, only this time it's a little girl. And beyond swapping the genders of the Antichrist Christ Kid, this film just tries to do an extremely low budget retread of the original where you have these parents that don't want to believe this little girl is the Antichrist and so many other people definitely pick up on the very overt creepiness of her. There's some accidental deaths along the way. Everything about this movie, though, is extremely cheap, low budget, and almost laughably bad. Namely, the music. There's like these xylophone tones and very made-for-TV, almost kid-centric music that is played alongside these darker, more sinister scenes that just completely take you out of it. It's bordering on so bad that it's good because it's just so comical. Even the accidental deaths themselves are set up in a way where they're much more hilarious than they are tense filled or gruesome and then by the end of it you get you know the the twist ending or the the continuation that they planned on making more sequels to explore that just just nobody wanted but easily of all the films in this franchise this is the one that you could most easily skip and dispense of and you're not going to miss anything narratively that this franchise hasn't given you already and done significantly better in previous films Coming in at number five is gonna be Omen 3, The Final Conflict. And this is one that I was very intrigued about when I first saw it and ended up being massively disappointing because I was expecting a lot from Sam Neill in the role of Damien. And unfortunately, the way that this movie is structured, it gets rid of everything that you love about the Omen franchise. You no longer have the creepy kid element because he's not a kid anymore. And they all but dispense of the accidental death, the omens themselves, and it just plays more straightforward as almost like this political thriller horror film where you have Damien who is very high up in the political world and he has all these disciples and all these followers and he's basically just assassinating his political rivals to get more and more power. There's a section of the film where he essentially puts into motion a bunch of murdering of babies, of children, you know, very much tying into these old classic biblical stories, and that's just not a very pleasant thing to experience on film. So there's not really much about the story that this third film is giving you that appeals to me whatsoever. The only saving grace would have been Sam Neill's performance, and he's done very good in horror and villainous roles since this, but... What he does with Damien almost felt like it was a stage presentation, almost like he was in a play. I mean, there's a lot of times where he has to monologue to nobody, like he's talking to God or just talking out loud, and it just comes across awkward. Don't necessarily blame him. That's what the script required. That's probably what he was directed to do, but it just comes across very hokey. And so while this film does culminate and you know conclude the story and there's certain satisfaction to that i guess it's just not a chapter in this franchise that i enjoyed watching and unless i'm in the mood to binge through all of them i don't ever see myself re-watching it coming in at number four is going to be the 2006 remake and there's a part of me that always wants to put this at the bottom just because i can't stand the notion of shot for shot remakes i think it's creative plagiarism i'm somebody that really champions remakes i enjoy remakes and i always root for them to be good not a lot of times does it end up being that way but the shot for shot approach always annoys me because there's just no point in doing that. This exact same film already exists, it's much better, and anybody that is in the mood to watch The Omen is just gonna watch the original. You're not bringing anything new to the table, you're not exploring things in a different way, you know, they modernize some of the kills, and of course it's shot better, and it looks better because it's modern, and you know, there's some performances in here that are really good. It's competently made all the way around, but it just is empty. It's soulless because 
it's a carbon copy of a film that is already established as a classic. And so I just, this, the Psycho remake, other films like this that just take the shot for shot approach, I, I really can't stand. And aside from watching them for the sake of a review and a ranking, I'm never going to pull this off the shelf because I'm always just going to experience the story in the better version of the original. Really quick before we move on to our top three, if you are not blessed enough to be born into or adopted into a family that is royalty to get your name out there, the other easiest way to do it is by creating your own website. And that is where the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace, is here to help. Whether you own your own business or just want to display your creativity, having your own website is crucial to getting your name out there. And if you're like me, you don't know the first thing about web design and wouldn't even know where to start to create your own website. Well, Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs and creatives to stand out and succeed online. Squarespace will help you create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, even sell content or merch all in one place, all on your terms. Squarespace's new Blueprint AI allows you to personalize your new website with a guided design system, choosing from professionally curated layouts and styling options to build the base of your website. You can also upload video content and organize an entire library to showcase your content on a video page, or even sell custom merch for a passive income stream that engages your audience and scales your brand. So if you're ready to break ground on your new website, head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Cody Leach to save 10% off of your first purchase of a website or domain. And thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Moving on to number three, we have Damien the Omen 2. And this is one that I think is a pretty solid sequel. It doesn't necessarily capture everything that I love about the original. It pales in comparison, but if we're gonna continue the Damien Omen storyline, I think they do a solid enough job here. This sequel lets go a lot of the slow building dread of the first film and goes for a much more overt slasher tone where you have these accidental deaths, these omen signature kills, uh, people getting eviscerated that get in the way of Damien's legacy. And I think that there's a, a certain amount of entertainment that comes with that. This does have some of the better kills of the franchise and this more than any of the movies in this franchise is very much like the prototype for what eventually became the Final Destination franchise. And I like all of that. I think the kid that plays Damien in his older age is still pretty good. He's still effectively creepy here and there. I wish the film would have explored a little bit more of his turmoil, maybe a little bit more confliction with his legacy. There's one scene where he like yells out in a dock where he's like, no, why me? And that's the only moment in the entire film where he doesn't just embrace being an evil little fucker. So I think the movie would have been much more interesting narratively if there was at least uh, in the middle act of the film, at least being some back and forth where he doesn't necessarily want to fulfill that destiny, but something pushes him there. So missed opportunity on that front, also a missed opportunity with this plot twist involving his caretakers, like the parents that are looking over him, and you have one of them that is a disciple of his, and the other one that is very much a, a Christian, which again could have made the movie a little more interesting narratively if they had explored that dynamic more throughout the film instead of just utilizing it as this last minute little twist reveal. But overall, I enjoy this film and I have no problem following up the first Omen by watching this one. Then after that, I like to tap out. Coming in at number two, surprise, surprise, is The First Omen. This one really surprised me. If you checked out my review, I gave context to the fact that numerous times on this channel, I've said I do not like horror prequels. I don't like, oftentimes, the answers that they give. I most times think they're answering questions I'm not even asking, and it kind of gets rid of some of the mystique. And what they did with The First Omen that I really appreciated was that they actually chose something to explore, which is the motivations and the goals of the people that actually brought forth the birth of Damien to give a little more context to some of the events of the first three films. And I thought that that was actually something that was valuable to bring to this franchise. So surprise, a prequel that actually adds something besides just a bunch of fucking Easter eggs and winks and nods and giving us a bunch of extra exposition that nobody was asking for. There's also a lot of solid scares that are built up here and not the typical Hollywood jump scares. They're just slow built dread. There's these disturbing images that are gonna stick in your head. There's a number of them that just really go for broke that push that R rating to where I'm actually surprised they were ab able to get an R rating. And by the end of it, it fits really nicely with the first omen. 
The only major issue that I had with it, aside from some other smaller things, is that there's also an attempt to leave things open to make additional First Omen sequels that kind of run alongside the First Omen, I guess, and that makes no sense to me. That absolutely was some weird little corporate decision that seemed like a reshoot that was added in that adds nothing to this film and certainly took away from how effective the ending was. So very solid. But of course, coming in at number one, still reigning supreme is the original Omen. This is not only the best film in this franchise, it's one of the greatest horror films of all time and one of my personal favorites. This is a movie that has stood the test of time and proved itself to be completely timeless because everything about why it was so effective upon release is still relevant today. Just the concept in and of itself of what if you found out that your child was going to bring about the apocalypse? What if you found out your child was inherently evil and what would you be able to do to stop that? That's just a horrifying concept as a parent. This movie alongside things like Pet Cemetery that explore that are just the most unnerving and the most genuinely terrifying things that you can give me as a story. So that has always been the thing that I've latched onto the most about this one. I think that the performances in this film are really good, albeit some of them being old school, certainly more classical type of performances like with Gregory Peck. This did come out in the 70s, but the little kid that plays Damien, as a really good little uh, duality there where he's very cute and innocent looking and yet can give you a look that's very sinister and very dark uh, and you just have this impending doom feeling just by watching that kid stare. You have other elements like the nanny that comes in that's kind of the more physical threat in the movie. There's a lot of great kills here that even back in the 70s still look good and are still effective by today's standards. And it's a movie where just you go on this journey of finding out all these details with this father trying to figure out if this this revelation that he's been given about his kid is actually real and every single piece of information that he is given that solidifies the truth of it is more horrifying than the last. So this is an absolute classic. There's not really much else I can say about it that hasn't been said dozens of times over. It's basically a masterpiece and will probably always be the best film in this franchise. And for now, it absolutely is the number one. Well, that's it for this one, guys. If you enjoyed that, please click over here for my 2024 new release reviews. I'm also gonna put my playlist up here of all of the individual reviews of these films. If you want my more in-depth thoughts, be sure to check out Squarespace down in the video description below. Like, share, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss everything in the future. And as always, remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean you have to be.